Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me a chance to talk in this uh, wonderful workshop. Uh, in this talk, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, our uh, uh, works on uh, so-called bion saddle points, which are expected to uh, play an um, important role in understanding uh, uh, non-particle physics uh, and the research structure in a CPN uh, civil model. So this talk is based on the series of papers uh, in collaboration with these uh, people. So uh, <coughs> one of our motivation to study resurgence uh, is to understand uh, how to evaluate the path integral uh, uh, in a physical system like uh, field theory. Uh, uh, quantities like a partition function is usually given in the form of a path integral like this. And uh, uh, formally, uh, it is said that this kind of path integral is a kind of uh, integral over all uh, finite configurations. So, but uh, of course, uh, it is very, uh, uh, it is almost impossible uh, to uh, explicitly evaluate this kind of uh, uh, integral over all co field configuration. So we have to use some approximation method. Uh, the one of the uh, approxi approximation methods, uh, uh, which we can use almost all cases, is the uh, perturbative expansion. Uh, with respect to some uh, coupling constant in the model. And uh, such perturbative expansion gives a uh, good approximation uh, if the coupling constant is small. <coughs> but if, uh, but it has been known that uh, such perturbative perturbation series is a kind of uh, uh, factorially divergent uh, asymptotic series. And in many cases, uh, such uh, part of, uh, perturbation series is uh, uh, very non-summable. So we have a kind of uh, imaginary ambiguity, which is uh, corresponding to the uh, uh, singularity on the uh, borrowed plane. So uh, we expect that uh, we have to uh, take into account non-perturbative uh, subtle points, uh, uh, the contribution of non-perturbative subtle points, which uh, usually takes uh, this form. Uh, here, uh, S sigma is the uh, action, the value of action at the subtle point sigma and this, uh, uh, this uh, power series is the uh, kind of uh, perturbation series around the subtle point sigma. And then uh, we construct uh, trans series by uh, appropriately uh, summing uh, these uh, subtle point configurations. So then we expect that this uh, kind of uh, uh, trans series uh, gives a, a correct uh, physical <coughs> quantity, and we expect that there is no uh, uh, ambiguity here. So uh, what we would like to do is to uh, check if this is really uh, if this really gives the uh, uh, correct uh, physical quantity or not. So uh, the first step to construct uh, this kind of uh, uh, trans series is to find the uh, subtle point or uh, critical points of the action uh, in phys terminology of physics. Uh, these uh, subtle points uh, correspond to the solutions of the equation of motion of uh, the action S. Uh, but uh, as in the case of ordinary uh, <coughs> finite dimensional integral, uh, we, uh, when we construct a uh, trans series, we uh, uh, have to uh, take into account not only real solution, but also complex, uh, complex subtle point solutions. So uh, we have to uh, consider uh, an <coughs> anal analytic continuation of action by uh, uh, regarding the action as a function of the uh, a holomorphic variable phi by, by, by uh, complexifying that model. And then we can uh, find a subtle point by, uh, by solving the uh, euler lagrange equation, which can be obtained by uh, uh, taking the variation of action uh, with respect to this holomorphic variable. Then we can find subtle point uh, configurations uh, corresponding to, for example, uh, perturbative, perturbative vacuum and instant configuration and so on. Then next step uh, we have to take is to uh, to find uh, to to determine how to uh, uh, sum this uh, non-trivial uh, subtle point contribution. So uh, we have to determine which subtle points are and which uh, integration contours are relevant in this uh, trans series. So this can be done by using the uh, left shift timber method. So in this uh, left shift timber method, we first determine the uh, uh, symbol J sigma and dual member k sigma associated to each subtle point sigma. 
then uh, we can uh, use this uh, simple J sigma to, 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 to calculate the uh, 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 saddle point contribution to the partition function, J sigma. Uh, and we can uh, determine the coefficient in this uh, trans series by uh, looking up the uh, intersection number between this uh, dual thimble and uh, original integration contour. So uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the procedure of this reference method. But, uh, uh, but in general, it's uh, very difficult uh, to, do, to, to perform this kind of uh, procedure in infinite dimensional uh, configuration space. So this is a kind of challenging problem. But in, this, uh, in our work, we uh, kind of uh, indirectly uh, uh, solve uh, this kind of problem by uh, using a kind of uh, reduction from uh, infinite dimensional configuration space to uh, finite dimensional uh, subspace of this infinite dimensional configuration space. And then uh, by applying the lift symbol method in the finite dimensional subspace, we calculate, somehow calculate this kind of uh, partition function and physical quantities. So this is uh, one of the uh, main point I'd like to talk in this talk. I'd like, I'd like to tell you in this talk. Okay, so uh, the model, uh, uh, we are interested in is the uh, CPN minus one uh, sigma model, uh, which is uh, described by fields, which uh, can be uh, interpreted as a map from uh, 2D base space M uh, to uh, target CPN minus one. And action of this model is given like this. Uh, in this talk, uh, we identify this field as the uh, inhomogeneous coordinate of our CPN minus one target space. And this G A B is the Ruvinius 2D metric of the target uh, manifold, target CPN. So uh, because of this SDN isometry, this model has SDN symmetry. And this uh, G is a constant, a bare coupling constant. And we are, uh, we would, uh, so we consider expansion and non particle effects in, uh, with respect to this uh, bare coupling constant or a uh, renormalized coupling constant. Uh, which will be uh, which will appear after renormalization procedure. Okay, so this is the basic uh, uh, model uh, we, we are interested in. The reason why uh, we are interested in this kind of uh, CPN signal model is that uh, th this is this kind of the model can be understood interpreted as a kind of 2D analog of uh, 4D gauge theory, which like uh, QCD, which uh, describes our world. Uh, so uh, it has been known that uh, 2D two-dimensional uh, CPN minus CPN model can be interpreted as a kind of toy model of 4D gauge theory in the sense that they have ma many common properties like asymptotic freedom and instant on and large n and uh, mass gap or, and so on. So uh, our, uh, we expect that uh, this 2D CPN signal model has a, a similar resurgence structure as the 4D gauge theories. So we expect that uh, we can uh, uh, we can accept that we can uh, uh, obtain some hint for so-called uh, IR renormal problem uh, from relatively simpler 2D uh, models. Uh, so the, our motivation is to uh, use uh, nonlinear uh, 2D uh, CPN signal model to uh, to get the hint for this IR renormal problem. So let me uh, explain what uh, IR renormal problem is. So. Uh, IR renormal problem, <laughs> okay. So in gen generic uh, physical uh, theory, physical models, it is said that uh, factorial growth of the uh, uh, perturbation theories is related to uh, the factorial growth of the number of Feynman diagram contributing to the nth order uh, in the perturbation theory. But in the theories like uh, 4D gauge theories, uh, it, is, it has been known that uh, there is another source of uh, factorial growth of the perturbation series. Uh, for example, th uh, this kind of diagram, uh, which has uh, n fermion loops in the larger loop, uh, gives a kind of factorially large contribution, like the n factorial. So, uh, by, uh, so this, is, this gives the uh, uh, factorial growth of the perturbation series. And if we uh, take the uh, whatever resumption uh, of this kind of diagrams, then uh, we get uh, Singularity in the Borel plane uh, at uh, one over g square n. So, uh, so there must be some uh, non-trivial uh, subtle point corresponding to uh, uh, this singularity, but this can cannot be uh, 
the Yamil's instant on because the action, the value of action for this Yamil's instant is uh, like uh, one over g squared. So this is uh, this is much larger than the uh, value of the uh, 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 this thing, the position of this thing like d. So uh, and, and particularly uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, action of this uh, instant on uh, vanishes in the two fifth limit, uh, in the large, large n limit. And on the other hand, this uh, singularity does not, dis uh, does not go away uh, in the large n limit. So this Yamil's instant on can never be the, uh, uh, the singularity, uh, uh, subtle point corresponding to this singularity. Yeah. So you understand in your CPN, you don't go, you can say, please stand, not go to a large n limit, yeah? Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. Okay. It's not conform field suit, it depends on metric on the surface. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, anyway, uh, so, there, so from this uh, argument, we expect that there is another, other uh, subtle points that is called uh, renormalon. And this has been a, a long standing problem uh, because uh, this, the, the, the uh, we could not, uh, uh, this, uh, the subtle point corresponding to this renormal has never been uh, found for a long time. So this is the IR renormal problem. But uh, several years ago, uh, <coughs> there was uh, Algiers and Unstall gave a proposal for this candidate for this IR renormal that is called the Bion. Uh, this Bion is a field configuration uh, which consists of a pair of fractional instanton and anti-fractional instanton. So this, these two objects are uh, so, uh, play an important role in this talk. So let me uh, explain. So but it's, uh, zero topological church, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Right. This, they, they don't have the uh, okay. Bion doesn't have a uh, topological church. Okay. Let me uh, explain what they are. So, uh, oh, before that, uh, let me. Uh, so let us sh uh, look at uh, uh, some figure just for uh, just for fun. Uh, okay. This is a, a figure of an instant on, on cylinder, uh, instant on in CP1 signal model on cylinder. So here, this red region corresponds to the, the location of instant on. And if the size of instant on is much smaller than the radius of this uh, compact direction x, uh, this uh, instant on uh, is a ordinary, looks like an ordinary one single instant on. But if uh, we shrink the size of S1, then this instant on splits into two objects. Uh, and this is, this is in the case of uh, CP1 signal model. Uh, if you consider a uh, CPN minus one signal model, uh, single instant on splits into n fractional instant on. So, uh, okay, each of them uh, identifies the uh, uh, fractional instant on. So, okay, so this uh, plays an important role. So, let me uh, uh, explain this object more uh, in detail. So, okay, so the model uh, we consider is the uh, CPN minus one SIG model on cylinder. And <laughs> in this talk, uh, I will always uh, call the non compact direction as Euclidean time. And I will denote it uh, by symbol tau. And spatial direction is uh, denoted by x, and it is uh, compactified with a uh, period 2 pi r. Then, uh, action, we, con we consider it like this. So this is actually a little bit different from the previous one uh, because uh, the derivative is now uh, replaced with the uh, uh, covariant derivative. Uh, so this means that there is a, so we uh, introduced the background gauge field for SUN global symmetry, uh, MA, which takes value in the uh, Kalten subalgebra of SUN global symmetry of this model. So we introduced uh, this uh, kind of uh, background gauge field uh, so uh, basically, these uh, uh, parameters can be uh, arbitrary, uh, but uh, if you consider uh, this uh, uh, specific value of the uh, background gauge field, and this action uh, has a enhanced uh, ZN uh, discrete symmetry. So uh, this value of uh, background gauge field is called a ZN symmetric background. And uh, uh, the important point is that if we choose this uh, background, uh, then it is expected that this uh, model uh, has so-called adiabatic continuity. Uh, by using this, uh, we can uh, continuously connect the uh, uh, weak coupling de description of this model to the uh, strong coupling uh, description on R2. So uh, anyway, uh, we are uh, mainly interested in this, in this ZN symmetric case. 
Okay, anyways, uh, let us uh, solve the uh, equation of motion of this model uh, to find the subtle point of action. Uh, we can uh, easily find the uh, solution of the equation of motion by rewriting the action into the sum of uh, positive semi definite term and topological charges. In this model, uh, there are uh, two relevant topological charges. One is ordinary instanton number, which is given by the integral of uh, the Kähler form, uh, proof of the Kähler form. And another uh, uh, topological charge K is uh, given by uh, this quantity. So this is, uh, 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 so sigma is a kind of uh, the, uh, uh, obtained by the fairing uh, of the moment map of SN and the background gauge field. But anyway, this uh, quantity gives a uh, uh, difference of values of this sigma at in the uh, future infinity and the, uh, the uh, infinite past. So this means that uh, this quantity depends only on the boundary conditions. In this, in this sense, this is topological. So uh, these two topological charges are invariant under continuous deformation of the uh, field uh, phi. So uh, we can easily get the uh, solution of the equation of motion by minimizing the positive sem semi-definite part, which takes this one. So this is positive semi-definite. So we can easily minimize uh, this quantity just by a uh, requiring that this equality holds, then we get this BPS equations. Uh, I'm sorry, this M are just constants. M, M, M. Uh, so yeah, right, yes. This you just deform the standard deform, yes. model, I can see that on zero set of M, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Just the equation, because in series, should be, there are contra terms here, yeah, because there is a normalization. Yeah, right. What is the contra term on this? Actually, uh, at this moment, we don't consider, uh, we just consider only bare action. Bare. We, we are, yeah, yeah. we'll introduce the counter yeah, term later. Yeah. Should we interpret this correction to action by something, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, now we are considering only bare action. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, BPS equation. That this can be easily solved by uh, just, uh, this is just a uh, very simple equation. So we can get a general solution like this. Here, if A uh, are uh, arbitrary Laurent polynomial of the coordinate on the cylinder defined in this way. Okay, so this is a general solution. So we, uh, by, by choosing uh, uh, various F A, then we can get various uh, BPS solution, uh, solution of equation of motion. Uh, the, uh, the most basic solution is the uh, single instant on solution, uh, which can be obtained by a uh, setting one of uh, Fa to be uh, degree one polynomial and others to be zero. Then this configuration is a kind of uh, a single instanton solution because the instanton number is one. And then we can calculate the action, the value of action for this configuration Then it, it's given by uh, two pi over g squared. S but this barrier is much larger, much larger than the uh, value of action uh, expected to, to, to uh, be uh, accepted uh, subtle point for the IR domain. So this. So what is the definition of instant number? Is all the characteristics of the bundle, vector bundle of R cross S1, but it's trivial bundle, so it's zero. No, 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 but it's kind of normalized because it's not kind of not complex space, it's yeah. integral curvature. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So instant on cannot be, cannot be the IR domain. Uh, so, so what we have to find another solution that can be uh, responsible for this IR renormal. That is a fractional instanton, uh, which can be obtained by setting one of uh, F A uh, to be constant and others to be zero. So this is the, frac the solution uh, of uh, a fractional instanton, and this solution has two uh, degrees of freedom corresponding to a position modular parameter and phase, internal phase modular parameter, phi. Anyway, uh, if we brought uh, the function sigma uh, as a, a function of tau, then uh, we can uh, see this uh, kind of kink profile. So basically this solution, fractional instant solution is a kink solution uh, corresponding to a kind of uh, tunneling uh, process uh, between different minimum of action. So, and, and we can calculate the value of the action for this kink uh, solution, uh, then we get this uh, value. And uh, if you set uh, the value of this uh, 
background gauge field to the uh, GN symmetric point, then we get this value of action, uh, 2 pi over g square n. So this is uh, 1 over n times single instanton solution uh, uh, action. So this can be, uh, this is. Sorry, this is a sort of evaluation, right? Sorry, mm -hmm. this is sort of functional evaluation. Function evaluation. Yeah. Okay, so that you, you, you get solution plugging back to your right. previous one. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one over n times single instanton. So and this is the same order of the expected uh, uh, value of the action for the IR renormal. So this can be a IR renormal. But actually, the fractional instanton does not contribute to the, uh, uh, the partition function because uh, partition function uh, contribution as uh, partition function receives contribution only from periodic uh, configuration along this uh, Euclidean time direction. The compact file with period of beta. So uh, fractional instant on is a kind of a kink tunneling uh, process, so this cannot be uh, uh, periodic. But if we consider bion configuration, which consists of kink and anti-kink, then this kind of configuration can be periodic. So uh, this kind of bion uh, uh, can uh, have non-trivial contribution to partition function. So the question is if uh, uh, bion, this kind of configuration, can be identified with the renormalon or not. This is a, a question we, uh, we want to consider. Okay, so, uh, so uh, yeah, in our work, we uh, explicitly calculated this bion contribution uh, by using the lifted number method. Uh, so I would like to talk about this explicit variation this, of this bion contribution. <coughs> Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah. How do we know that it exists uh, in the m equals zero limit? Uh, in the m equals zero limit, this solution doesn't exist. But uh, so the point is that uh, so this is theory on defined on the cylinder with this periodic boundary condition, and uh, we expect that if we choose this value, then there is a adiabatic continuity. Then if you take the R infinity limit, this vanishes, but uh, because of this continuity, the theory on R2 without this uh, M uh, is related to this theory. How does one prove this assumption or justify it? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, in the large N limit, uh, there is a proof uh, that uh, there is no, actually, in the large N limit, uh, uh, there is a kind of, how to say, volume independence. Uh, so we can show uh, but uh, for uh, general n, it's a kind of conjecture, I think. So it means like in a large n limit, I will never obtain bion solutions? Also now stable or? In a, sorry? In large n limit, you uh -huh. don't have bion solutions? No, no, actually, uh, I think we expect that there are bion solutions also in the large n limit. But then they, they, this will be different bions, no? Different? Yeah. Why, why do you think so? I mean, because you, 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 it will equivalent, it will not equivalent to this formula because this deformation of parameter from your equation is gone. Actually, okay, ah, oh yeah, 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 simple, uh, yeah, if you take the simple large n limit, yeah, okay. yeah, this will appear, but if we fix this n uh, r, then we can get some configuration. Okay, so this is intercombination mm -hmm. n r. Yeah, yes. But, uh, sorry. It's you written that Euclidean time is uh, just even, so it's, uh, uh, well, uh, there's no temperature, right? Okay. Uh, and then you introduced uh, the temperature and uh, written the solution, which depends on your tau, but not on x, right? Right. Um, sample loss. Okay, yeah, at this moment, I just uh, considered a zero temperature limit, but uh, when we calculated the uh, partition function, we introduced the temperature. Mm -hmm. So we consider uh, the solutions which you reach and they don't depend on x, right? Uh, don't depend on uh, this solution. Okay. The, the solution, right? There was only tau dependence, but not x dependence. Not not x. And they, they still satisfy the equations of motion, right? Yes. So okay, so yeah. Yes. So okay. Uh, so let me explain our model. So the model I want to consider is the uh, it's better to use the uh, uh, 2D n equals 2 to supersymmetric CPN minus one signal model. 
because uh, actually this supersymmetry is not necessary to calculate this by uh, contribution, but it's uh, very convenient to consider supersymmetric model because we can check exact, uh, we can use the exact result to check our bion solution is really correct or not. So this is a model. Uh, we added some uh, fermion fermionic terms, and uh, okay, as I said, uh, uh, to calculate uh, the partition function, we need to compactify the tau direction. So uh, okay, we introduce. Uh, uh, Compactified uh, a period of this uh, compactified uh, time direction beta, and x is also a compactified. So we consider a theory on torus, and as I said, we consider the uh, uh, background gauge field uh, along this uh, compactified space direction, and we introduce the same uh, background gauge field for bosons and fermions because uh, in this way we can uh, keep the supersymmetry in this model. So from now you will be having toric partition functions, right? Uh, actually, okay, yeah. We actually, we consider we want to consider a kind of a gener uh, generating function mm -hmm. of uh, uh, this uh, observable by adding a source term uh, to this uh, Lagrangian. So, so we uh, so uh, we we want to consider uh, this uh, observable uh, by uh, evaluating the path integral of for this action. And uh, we consider endpoint correlation function of this uh, uh, this uh, operator by uh, differentiating the uh, generating function. Mm -hmm. What is M there? Uh, sorry, M. Uh, yeah, mu M. Uh, M mu is the uh, moment map of yeah. SNM. M is the background gauge field. This is, uh, takes value uh, in the SUN uh, sub uh, S, uh, the, the, the algebra S U the algebra of SUN. So we consider this uh, and uh, co point correlation function. Uh, actually, we can calculate uh, in this in our paper we calculated uh, by on contribution in C general CPN model. But uh, for 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 just for simplicity, let us focus on the case of CP one single model. Then the explicit form of action looks like this, and we consider a uh, generating function for this uh, uh, height of this uh, CP1, and we consider the uh, kind of uh, correlation function of this operator. So the reason why we consider this kind of uh, correlation function is that uh, uh, it, 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 by taking the uh, small uh, radius limit of the uh, space uh, direction, then we get the uh, quantum mechanics uh, in the uh, 1D limit. Uh, in this uh, 1D limit, we can ex ex exactly calculate this uh, uh, correlation function by solving the, uh, by using the uh, Schrodinger equation. So the zero point function is just a ground state energy, and it's uh, of course zero because of supersymmetry. And one point function is uh, uh, given like this. So this contains uh, infinitely many <coughs> non perturbative terms. So this is completely, uh, fully non perturbative and more interesting uh, quantity is the two-point function, which takes uh, this form. And actually, this uh, has a, a non-trivial uh, research structure. So let us uh, closely uh, look at this uh, quantity. So uh, by uh, expanding uh, with respect to the coupling constant g, we get this, uh, this perturbation series for this two-point function. So coefficient of this uh, uh, series is uh, gamma n plus 1. So this is diver factorial divergent. But if we look at uh, the non perturbative part, we have uh, here, uh, there's a uh, so imaginary part of the, this uh, non perturbative uh, uh, contribution jumps at uh, when uh, coupling constant path through the uh, real axis. So, uh, uh, so this quantity has this kind of non trivial uh, research structure. So, another question uh, we want to uh, check is that. Uh, if this kind of uh, structure uh, can be uh, re uh, reproduced from the uh, analysis of bion. So that's uh, another uh, problem we want to uh, discuss. OK, so uh, the first, let us. What, yeah. what is E2? How, what, what, how do you compute it? OK, E2 is the uh, uh, kind of this uh, kind of two point function integrated over this Euclidean time. And we can use, uh, so in the, 1D limit, uh, this, this model reduces to supersymmetric quantum mechanics, and we can solve the uh, Schrodinger equation in the supersymmetric uh, quantum mechanics. By using the solution of the Schrodinger equation, we can calculate 
this uh, checkpoint function. Exactly. So this is something on a strict limit of uh, zero radius or something? Zero radius limit, yes. So we can get this kind of uh, non-trivial uh, research structure, and we want to check if this non-trivial structure can be reproduced from the bion analysis. Okay, so let us solve the, let's first determine the bion solution by solving the equation of motion. So we consider the complexification of the target space, by, by complex by the uh, target space. And then we uh, use the uh, coordinates of this uh, space, uh, phi and the phi tilde, uh, which, uh, uh, so, so this, uh, okay, the original CP1 target space correspond to uh, phi tilde equal to the complex conjugate of phi. And then uh, we consider the analytic, analytic continuation of uh, action by regarding the action as a holomorphic uh, <coughs> function of phi and phi tilde. And, and then uh, we uh, told this uh, equation of motion for this uh, uh, by taking the variation with respect to phi and phi tilde. Because now we are considering the two-dimensional uh, field theory, so the equation of motions are uh, two uh, partial differential equations, so it's very difficult to solve in general. So we consider uh, this x independent on that, uh, like this. Yeah, because, uh, uh, so this x dependent, on, uh, if we use this x dependent on that, we uh, cannot consider uh, subtle points uh, which contains uh, ordinary instanton, because instanton uh, depends, on, depends on x direction. But uh, we are, uh, if we are uh, interested in the leading order non-tripartable contribution, which is uh, expected to be given by Bion, uh, then we can uh, ignore x direction because the uh, uh, Bion configurations are independent of x. So uh, we use this uh, and x independent answers. Then we, uh, the equation of, equations of motion reduces reduce to uh, uh, two uh, ordinary differential equations. And actually, this model has two uh, symmetries. One is uh, time shift symmetry and phase rotation symmetry. So we have two conservative charges in, ch conservative charges in, in this model. And the degrees of freedom of this model is two. So we can uh, use the two conservation law to determine, uh, to completely fix the form of the solution in this way. So, so the solution is uh, essentially given by the Jacobi elliptic function. And there are several uh, uh, parameters, a, omega, k. They are just uh, uh, co complex constants depending on the uh, parameter in the model. And uh, a pair of integer, pq. <laughs> so pq uh, is our integers labeled in the solutions, uh, which takes uh, which, uh, in this uh, range. So this means that uh, this solution, uh, uh, so there we, we have infinitely many subtle point solutions. And the important point is that this is, these are uh, uh, complex subtle points because for general generic P and Q, phi tilde is not equal to phi bar because these are complex co uh, con constants. So they are uh, complex subtle points. Okay, so let us look at the uh, simplest uh, example of a solution. So this is the uh, 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 real bion co uh, solution corresponding to P equal one. Uh, this is a single bion solution, uh, which looks like a, uh, yeah, this uh, takes the form of sine hyperbolic in <coughs> a bad infinity limit. So this is the orbit in the, uh, the target CP1. So this corresponds to the uh, tunneling uh, from North Pole to South Pole to North Pole. And if we plot this uh, height function as a function of tau, then we, we can see that there are kink and anti-kink. So this is a bion configuration. So this is uh, called the real bion solution because in this case, uh, phi tilde is equal to the complex conjugate of phi. So this is a solution in the uh, original CP1. But if we consider only this kind of solution, uh, we can show that uh, Suji ground state energy uh, becomes non-zero because of this uh, non partiality contribution. So we, uh, we, Witten index is zero in this case. So we, what is Witten index? If uh, sorry, uh, this is zero. Then we can index must be zero, right? Is it? Yeah. Okay. So this is okay. We can index is n. What? N. But then uh, energy cannot be uh, cannot, be cannot be zero. Cannot be different from zero. If we index is non-zero, yeah. then the energy of the vacuum is zero. Vacuum there is are zero. Yeah. Yeah. Vacuum is so. Yeah. So Suji. So this contradicts with the uh, Suji 
ground state. So there must be another contribution to cancel this contribution. So that is a, a complex bio uh, contribution. This is also a p equal one a solution with p equal to one, uh, which looks like a cosine hyperbolic in the beta infinity limit. So this is called cosine, a complex bio because in this case phi bar phi tilde is not equal to phi bar. So uh, if we plot the uh, height of function as a function tau, then we can see that this is also like a, a tunneling uh, solutions. But uh, uh, in the tunneling process, this value of height becomes complex. So this is very peculiar solution. But uh, we need this solution to uh, guarantee that the Suzy ground state energy uh, is zero. So, uh, so this kind of uh, a complex solution is uh, important to, to obtain the uh, result uh, consistent with Suzy. OK, so this is a thing, these are the single bion solutions. And uh, uh, for general P and Q, for example, this uh, is a, a figure for uh, P, Q equal 3, 1. So there are uh, multi bion uh, uh, in the configuration. So essentially, P, integer P is number of bions, and Q is a kind of uh, label of subtle points in P bion sector, which uh, basically controls the combination of complex and real bions in the configuration. So OK, so this is a, a, a bion solutions. So uh, now we have uh, subtle point solutions. Now let's uh, consider the semi-classical uh, bion contribution by calculating the leading order term in the uh, bion contribution, this, this, uh, this part. So naively, uh, we can calculate this kind of uh, quantity by uh, just by uh, evaluating the determinant of this uh, infinite dimensional version of the uh, uh, matrix of the second derivative. But actually, we cannot do this because uh, in the weak coupling limit we are interested in, uh, there are uh, some nearly flat direction of uh, action. So more precisely, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, show that uh, the, this matrix in the weak coupling limit has uh, some zero eigenvalues. So this means that uh, for weak in the weak coupling limit, there are quasi-zero modes uh, for which uh, we cannot perform the Gaussian integration. So we have to be careful, more careful, carefully uh, treat that integration along this direction. So to do uh, so, uh, let us define a so-called body of action. Uh, so uh, roughly speaking, this body of action is a kind of finite dimensional subspace on which the real part of the action is uh, nearly flat. Uh, to, to define this uh, precisely, uh, let us uh, uh, define uh, the uh, uh, set of configuration called va valley solution by uh, this parameterized by a quasi moduli parameter uh, corresponding to the direction of this uh, zero eigenvalue of this operator. Then uh, we can, by this uh, valley solution can be obtained by solving this valley equation, uh, which is uh, obtained by a projecting. Uh, the equation of motion onto the normal direction to the, uh, this uh, direction. Anyway, so we can uh, define this kind of uh, set of uh, configuration. Uh, OK, so let me uh, briefly, uh, before uh, showing the uh, solution of Bali equation, uh, let me uh, briefly uh, mention about the, the relation between Bali and the symbols. So uh, symbols are uh, defined by solving these flow equations. And uh, uh, in the uh, valley, uh, so this finite dimensional subspace, the uh, flow equation is given like this. Here, S effective is the uh, effective function on, on the valley. And uh, this GAB is the induced metric on this finite space, finite dimensional space. And we can show that if uh, we uh, have the solution in this valley, uh, solution of the flow equation in this valley, we can embed uh, that uh, solution into the solution uh, solution of this uh, flow equation of uh, original space. So this means that uh, symbols in Bari is contained in the symbols in the original configuration space. So this uh, fact can be uh, used. Uh, this is very useful when we consider uh, intersection numbers and so on. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> OK, so yeah, we can uh, actually uh, explicitly write down the solution of valley, uh, valley solution uh, in the case of a single bion and uh, inf uh, weak coupling limit and beta infinity limit. Uh, so this is a solution. This is actually uh, a kind of kink, anti-kink configuration uh, because we, so yeah, this is uh, some of uh, kink, anti-kink. 
And this value solution is parameterized by one uh, quasi moduli parameter, eta, uh, whose real part corresponds to the uh, relative position of kinks, and uh, imaginary part corresponds to the relative phase degrees of freedom. OK, this is a solution. And then, uh, actually, this uh, set of uh, solution contains, of course, uh, real by on third point and the complex by on third point corresponding to these specific values of the uh, quasi moduli parameter. OK, by using this uh, value solution, we can uh, decompose the degrees of freedom into the direction along the valley and normal direction in this way. Then uh, we can uh, <laughs> reduce the action in, in the weak coupling limit uh, as a, in this way. So here, this is an effective action, uh, uh, via an effective action, which is defined uh, in this way. And uh, this, uh, uh, this is basically the function on the valley, uh, action of the valley, action, the value of action on the valley, and uh, uh, several points of this uh, function correspond to the bion solution, real bion and the complex bion solution. And for normal direction and the Fermi direction, we get the uh, 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 Gaussian form. So by evaluating the integrating out the normal direction and the Fermi direction, we basically get uh, schematically, uh, we can write the uh, P, uh, single bion contribution in this way. So here, uh, this is the uh, one loop uh, determinant corresponding to the functional determinant, uh, which can be obtained by integrating out. Uh, the normal direction and uh, fermion direction. And we can evaluate this one loop determinant by using the counter climb mode expansion, uh, which is basically the uh, Fourier expansion. And then uh, for each uh, counter climb mode, uh, we get uh, uh, this operator, differential operator, uh, delta P and delta F, becomes a, a kind of one dish rating operator. So we can use. Uh, a, kind of a technique to calculate the one the, uh, cal calculate the functional determinant for this kind of funding uh, shredding operator, for example. Are you still considering two comma two supersymmetric model? Sorry? Are you still considering two comma two yes. supersymmetric yes. model? Yes, yes. So, yeah, but back background is non-BPS, so yeah, there is no such structure. That seems with the fermions. Yeah, right. Okay. So by using this kind of uh, technique to calculate the 1D uh, functional determinant of the 1D determinant, then we get this uh, expression for the one loop determinant. This is uh, basically given by the sum over counter grind mode. And this x is given like this. So, so this uh, summation over the counter grind mode is divergent. So this is actually, uh, this is a kind of uh, ordinary uh, UV divergence in field theory. So we can use uh, some regularization in a standard uh, regularization to, uh, to, to, to regularize that, this uh, divergent sum. Then we get this uh, expression for the one loop determinant. Here, now there is a cutoff scale to, to introduce to regularize this uh, quantity. Then by using this uh, one loop determinant, we can combine uh, this uh, with the bare effective action to get the uh, renormalized effective action which takes this one. This renormalized effective action takes, uh, depends on the renormalized parameter, epsilon tilde. Uh, this is shifted by the quantum, mechanic, the quantum uh, effect and constant y, which depends on the uh, renormalized coupling constant, uh, which uh, is defined in this way. So, so we get a uh, renormalized uh, effective what action. Is the R is here? In the Sorry. Uh, yeah. R. Compactification or is it compactification? Compactification radius, yes. Then uh, finally we get this form, which is expression for the uh, single bion contribution. So this is a, a, a finite dimensional integration over this uh, quasi moduli parameters. So, but we are now considering the complex file theory. So quasi moduli parameters are also complex files. So we have to determine uh, which subtle and which contours are relevant to, for this uh, quantity. So that can be done by using the rested number method. And actually for this uh, renormalized uh, action, we can uh, explicitly determine, solve the uh, flow equation to determine the symbol and uh, dual symbol. So this is a picture of the uh, dual symbol. Uh, uh, actually, this is a 3D projection from uh, for dimensional space. But anyway, we can explicitly determine the uh, symbol and real symbol. Then we can uh, uh, 
uh, find intersection number and the integration path explicitly. Then we can evaluate the uh, quasi-modular integral. Then we get uh, this result for the uh, uh, generating function. Sing uh, single baryon contribution to the uh, generating function. So this is very complicated, but the important point is that this contains uh, uh, jump at the uh, this, uh, imaginary g equal to zero. So this is, uh, so yeah, 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 if the exergence works in this model, then this should be related to the uh, uh, variable singularity at uh, the value of this exponential. So uh, furthermore, uh, we can see from uh, this uh, jump of this uh, non perturbative part, uh, we can, uh, how to say, uh, so this implies that the perturbative part of this quantity should uh, have this uh, large order behavior. Uh, uh, part of it but should have this uh, large object behavior. So this is kind of the, uh, 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 how to say, uh, prediction from the bion analysis. But it's very difficult to check this because uh, higher order, large order behavior uh, is very difficult to uh, calculate in the field theory. But uh, if we take the uh, 1D limit, we can uh, use the Schrodinger equation uh, and we, we can uh, calculate the, uh, this kind of higher order behavior by using the part of the analysis, by using the tools like uh, Bendau package, mathematical package. And then uh, we can compare the Bendau analysis and bio analysis uh, by taking the ratio of this uh, quotient. Then uh, taking the large end, uh, looking at the large end behavior, uh, we can see that uh, this ratio approaches one uh, for any value of the uh, source parameter epsilon. So this means that bion analysis uh, resurgent, so bion uh, result is uh, completely consistent with the uh, resurgence analysis, resurgence argument. Okay, so, uh, so this is a result in the CP1 model. We can easily generalize the result to the CPN minus one sigma model. And the uh, important difference is that there are n minus one types of bion, but for each, each bion, we can repeat the same type of calculation. Then uh, we can uh, calculate the single bion co uh, contributions. And so this is a, a, a result for the uh, single bion contribution. Uh, this is a jump of the uh, single bion contribution. So this is, uh, so there is a jump in the imaginary part of the uh, generating function, uh, but this is a little bit so difficult, uh, complicated. So uh, let us uh, focus on the uh, point, uh, the GN symmetric point by setting MA to this value. Then uh, we get this expression for the uh, generating function. So, so important point is that this is proportional to uh, this quantity. So this is uh, means that there is, uh, and we have a uh, jump uh, in the imaginary part of this uh, generating function. So uh, this means that uh, for uh, the part of the perturbation series, uh, perturbation series have, should have a uh, borderline uh, singularity corresponding to this uh, value of action, well, this point for pi uh, over g r squared n. So this is uh, nothing but the uh, uh, expected value of the uh, uh, action uh, for the IR normal. So this means that uh, uh, this result is completely consistent with the uh, proposal that Bayon is responsible for uh, IR normal. Okay, so this is okay. So uh, yeah, uh, another thing that, uh, I want to uh, Mention is that uh, because uh, in the 1D limit, uh, our bion solution is actually the general solution because there is no expandence. So uh, multi you can try to uh, uh, sum the all the uh, all other multi bion contribution, and p bion contribution can be calculated in this way. So this is very complicated, but also in this case <coughs> there is a jump here, and by uh, summing over the uh, uh, Summing of a bion number, we can get the uh, trans series for this. This is the result. Uh, 
we can see that uh, the ground state energy is zero, and this is completely consistent with the exact result. And we get this expression for the uh, two-point function. And uh, here we have a uh, uh, jump in the imaginary part of the uh, two-point function. Then actually, this is completely consistent with the uh, resurgence structure, which can be obtained from the uh, exact result. So, so this means that uh, our bion uh, calculation is uh, completely consistent. In, uh, 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 at all order in the bion uh, number. Okay, so let me summarize the talk. Uh, we uh, explicitly uh, calculated bion contribution in CPN minus one sig model, and we got a uh, cons completely consistent result with expected result and structure, and we got consistent result uh, with the uh, proposal that bion is related to uh, IR nomorum. And uh, but uh, to show that if this bion is really uh, identified with the IR renormal, we have to check that if uh, the uh, higher order behavior of the uh, perturbation series is really uh, agree with the, our bion result. Mm -hmm. So we have to check. We want to check uh, explicit higher order perturbation series in the simple model. This is a, a important uh, future work. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thank you very much. So, any questions? Well, I actually have two questions. <laughs> so, what, what, one is, did you try 0, 2, and 0, 1 supersymmetric signal models, uh -huh. which kind of interpolate between these two extremes where you have all control and no control? <coughs> and second question is, in four dimensions, we expect that confinement is governed by QCD strings. So, in what sense this is analog of QCD string solution? String solution. Okay, the, uh, for the, the right mechanism for confinement in this two-dimensional model. Yeah, actually, that's uh, the uh, okay. For, for the first uh, question, we tried uh, n equals one zero, but in that case, uh, yeah, actually uh, we we did couldn't calculate the uh, so what was wrong uh, in a quantum mechanics limit we can calculate uh, anything uh, and the result is actually almost the same. But in the case of uh, field theory, uh, because uh, renormalization is much more complicated, so yeah, we cannot do this kind of thing. So yeah, we we cannot uh, we couldn't calculate that, uh, anything in the case of uh, field uh, two-dimensional uh, angle to one zero. And uh, so. Uh, for the uh, second question, uh, okay, so <coughs> so it's about the uh, uh, confinement. Yes, actually, yeah, I have to say that to uh, DCP and single model is very similar to uh, gauge theory, but uh, not exactly the same. There are several uh, differences. For example, to the uh, there's no, for example, symmetry breaking uh, phase transition in the 2D model, but in 4D theory, there can be uh, such tra phase transition. So, yeah, they are similar, but there are differences. So, I, I think, uh, yeah, we cannot use this completely, yeah, this cannot be the complete analog of the 4D theory. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is renormal also kind of infrared renormals, yeah? Infrared, yes. Yes, but the renormalizations will provide that correction, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, in general, it kind of got confusing when you do, maybe in the process model, just a scaffold constants is still kind of positive, yeah, in the sense. Yeah. But in a more complicated situation, you get several running scaffold constants, means that actual actions, some of very big numbers multiplied by actual things, it's how, how one can justify uh, this uh, Tingle speech because you, you have solved equations more things kind of running a couple of constants as well, yeah. Uh, in, in your situation, it's kind of you just rescale a couple of constants, nothing else, so it'll be the same equation of motion. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but in a more complicated situation. Yes, okay. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the point. Uh, so, yeah, because we are now considering weak coupling yeah. regime 
uh, which means that the, the, yeah, coupling constant is uh, small. But to access a uh, strong coupling regime, we have to use something like this kind of uh, adiabatic continuity. So we cannot uh, perform this kind of analysis for strong coupling regime, but we can use some uh, this kind of property by using uh, to access that regime. Any other questions? Maybe I have just a small question, which is you talked about the Fubini Schrute metric yeah. on yeah. CP and yes. one, but did you ever use the singularities that has some poles because there's a denominator? Do you use the singularities of that somewhere? Singularity. A, a Fubini Schrute metric. So, yes. Are you in the complexification of the singularity? Yeah, but do those appear in the calculations? Uh, we, uh, sorry, I don't know. The singularities of the Fubini Schrute metric. Singularity. On how <laughs> complex part is CP. Ah, complex file. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, yes. Actually, yes. Uh, it's a chart singularity. It's not a physical singularity, right? Yeah. Actually, oh, this yeah, yeah. complex. Well, it's kind of but it's singular in the complex. Uh, yeah. Right. In the complex. In the complex case. Yeah. Actually, this complex bion solution hit that singularity uh -huh. if coupling constant is real. But if we introduce complex by the coupling constant, we can uh, avoid that point. So this is, yeah, actually that is an important point. Okay, so thank you, Sudarian.